out hustled, out worked, out executed. to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watch UK99. Thank you as always for taking the time to watch these videos. So last night I dug in to watch game four of the Nixon Heat and I gotta be honest this was the first game where I just I really didn't see much of a way the Knicks were going to really compete in this game. Put it this way I felt we would know within a couple of minutes if the Knicks were going to show up for a, what really is a do or die game. I mean, I know the series is not over. The Knicks are down 3-1. Hypothetically, they could come back and win three straight games. They've had 11 three-game winning streaks already this season. But against a team coached by Eric Spolstra, you just, it's not going to happen. It just doesn't seem realistic. This felt a lot to me like the Knicks Pacers series from back in 2013, where the Knicks dropped game one at home, then they won game two at the Garden. Then the series shifted to Indiana, and I was actually there for those games. That was actually the first time in my life I actually took a trip by myself overnight, rented a hotel room by myself, the whole thing. We from Chicago to Indianapolis. Probably the highlight of that trip for me was eating the uh, shrimp cocktail at the infamous St. Elmo Steakhouse. The basketball could, was, it was hardly ever competitive. It just felt like in those games, the Pacers wanted it more than the Knicks. They were getting to the loose balls, getting the rebounds. The shots were going down. Even when the Knicks made a run, you just never felt like they were in the game. Well, 10 years later, fast forward, and it's the same exact storyline. Now, game three was in this series was far worse in terms of the actual score. But I, I really felt for the Knicks to come back in this series. They had to even it up going back to the Garden where they would have the home court advantage again. And within three or four minutes, I was like, why do I even have this, this game on right now? What is the point? Twice, the Knicks are hanging around the half court. They make just a lazy pass, just a little, here, it's just us here in the back court. I'm going to make this pass. Here you go. They make this little dinky pass, and a Miami player takes it away. Forces a steal because of hustle, because of effort, and because of desire. Takes it away, and it leads to a Miami basket. It happened not once, it happened twice. If I was Coach Tibbs, I would have pulled those players from the floor at that point. And I'm not even going to get into specifics. I'm not going to get into like statistics, because the, it's that is not what this game was about. It comes down to one quote that of all people, of all people on the Knicks, Julius Randle said. Maybe they wanted it more. Maybe they wanted it more. There is, you know what? Here's the thing. I have not seen any of my teams win a championship now in 29 years. And it's amazing. When the Jets are the team, right? When the New York Jets, of all the teams I root for, might right now have the best chance to win a championship, you know you're in trouble. You know you are in big, big trouble. But I can deal with a loss if you have less talent. I can deal with that. What I struggle to deal with is a complete lack of effort, lack of hustle, being outworked by a team that should not be better. Being outworked, being outcoached, being outhustled, and I've defended Tom Thibodeau. I really, really have. I swear, to, I swear to you, I, I can make so many comparisons. I feel like right now I'm talking about the Rangers again. And I'm not going to start going off like I did in the other video. I, I, I just don't have the energy for it anymore. Or at least not right now I don't. It's early in the morning. But a team that just fell apart. It's, like what the, it's amazing. What the Knicks did to Cleveland in the first round. Out rebounding them, out working them. The depth was better. Out shooting them. The other team's main players looking like they weren't ready for the moment. It's happening right now to the Knicks by Miami. It has been a complete role reversal of, the, of that series. And that is what is most surprising. I mean, I figured it would be a battle, but the Knicks would ultimately take the series. Man, little did I know that the Knicks would just act like the first round was enough. And, you know, hardly they barely showed up for these two games in Miami. 
You know, they played hard in game one. They played hard in game two. But some of these players have just seem, seemingly regressed. Mitchell Robinson, what has happened to him in in this series? I mean, he embarrassed Jared Allen. He embarrassed Devin Mobley. He has been schooled by the Bam Adebayos of the world in this series. All the advantages we thought the Knicks might have going into the series. The bench, you know, their ability to not turn the ball over. Uh, coaching, second chance points. It, it, you know, it, it's it's been the exact opposite. And if I had to, and hey, there is one bright side from game three to game four. You know, the Knicks never let in game three. Eh, game four, they let for 24 seconds. So maybe that's something to hang your hat on. I, I don't know. But going back to the rebounds for a minute, you know, we exalted the Knicks' ability to rebound on the offensive glass between Robinson, Hartenstein, Hart, all these guys, right? Even R.J. Barrett got, got into the mix a little bit. But if you can believe this, in the fourth quarter alone, just the fourth quarter, Miami had seven offensive rebounds. That's a good game for some teams. And they had 13 offensive rebounds overall. That comes down to preparation, effort, and hustle. That's all that is. And the Heat have had that in spades over the Knicks in this series. The Knicks are in one point in the fourth quarter. Down 91-84. They got the lead down to single digits. They were actually trying to make you believe they might have a chance. I mean, I, I had turned my emotion switch off at that point. because I, I was expecting the loss. I didn't want to let myself get teased again. To let, them th to let myself think they would actually get back in this game. So they're down 91-84. They force three missed shots by Miami. And every single time Miami gets the ball back, ultimately scoring to make it a 93-84 game. It was never close again. So now what happens going back to New York for Game 5? Are the Knicks going to show up? Are the fans going to show up? It's actually something worth considering. I, I don't know. I mean, we know every seat will be filled. But how much energy, how much life will there be in the infamous arena on 33rd and 7th? It's hard for, it's hard to say, really. But going forward into this offseason, and I feel we're talking about the offseason right now and it's not technically over, but even if the Knicks do win Game 5, there's absolutely no reason to believe they're going to win Game 6. But no matter what happens, whether the Knicks win no more games this year or whether they actually come back to pull off a miracle and win this series, they have to figure out something with their outside shooting. You know, they have got to drop shots, no matter what it takes. RJ Barrett, not a shooting guard. Josh Hart, love watching him play, not a true shooter. Jalen Brunson, inconsistent shooter. Julius Randle, oh my gosh. I, uh, I don't know what team would take Julius Randle and take his contract, but man, oh man, I would take like a second round draft pick for him because what is the point? Obi Toppin, I, I don't need to see him shoot a three pointer ever again. Uh, the collective shooting on this team stinks. Brunson's about the best of the bunch, really. But, you know, he's prone to having off nights, as we've seen in this series. So when free agency, when the draft time comes, you know, Leon Rose has to focus on improving the team's outside shooting. Let's face it, the NBA nowadays is a glorified three-point shooting contest most nights. That's what it's become. I wish it wasn't, but that's how it feels. I'm not an NBA fan really in my heart, and I haven't been in a while, but I'll always root for the New York Knicks. So if the Knicks are going to win. they got to play the game the way it's meant. It's being played now. They have to have outside shooting. You know, R.J. Barrett is at his best when he's driving to the hoop, kicking the ball out. Josh Hart, same thing. You have to have somebody there who can knock down those open shots. They haven't had it. And, yeah, we could get into the refs as well. A whole lot of horrific calls. They never call a reach and foul on Miami. But you know what? After game three, I'm done blaming the refs. I'm, I, I, can't do, I can't blame them for every single game. It ultimately comes down to the Knicks' inability to shoot. It comes down to hustle and effort, and the Knicks have not had it. I've left that quote up here because it needs to resonate. It needs to be said. Maybe the Heat wanted it more than the New York Knicks, and for Julius Randle, of all people, to say that, take a look in the mirror, Julius, because you have shown nowhere near the effort that your contract says that you should be showing, and the fact that you were an all-star. You're no all-star when it comes to the playoffs. Not even close. Not a playoff performer by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I am one very disappointed Knicks fan. 
Uh, I don't expect the series to go past five games. We'll see what happens. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Give me your comments. I want to see them down in there. You think the Knicks are going to extend this series past game five? That's about the only thing I can ask at this point. Thanks, everybody, again for watching. I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. Wicker chair.